During the year 609 A.D., a great event occurred at Mecca, Arabia. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, began to receive revelations from God, and the religion of Islam in the final form arrived on this planet Earth. The revelations to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, continued on and off for 23 years and provided instructions to mankind in all matters of life on this earth and about the day of judgment and the life hereafter. Islam totally rejected idol worship regardless of any reason and also declared that idol worship or associating partners with God is the greatest sin a human being can commit in this world. God is independent of all creatures or creations. He is present everywhere and does not have son or daughter or any partners. Islam clarified that man must worship God directly without the help of any man-made intermediate object or form. God does not appear in different forms. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had the greatest challenge in Mecca where idol worship was so deeply rooted that even to speak against this practice meant risking one's life. He was tortured by the people when they heard his teachings. He had to migrate to another city, Medina, where he received cooperation and support. In the year 630 A.D., the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came back to Mecca with 10,000 followers and took Mecca without any resistance. The majority of the people had accepted Islam and the Prophet removed all idols from Kaaba and abolished idol worship forever. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized the fact that he was a human being and the last messenger of God. After Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, passed away, there were four heads of the state known as caliphs who were elected in succession in the order shown. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. They were also the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. During the time of these four caliphs, Islam saw the greatest expansion from Arabia to Syria, Iraq to Iran, to Egypt. These four caliphs practiced the true Islamic character during their lives and showed remarkable success, so remarkable that the world had not seen before. It is during this period Muslim merchants began to arrive at west coast of India. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself was a merchant before his prophethood and he was famous for his honesty and dependability in business. Hence it was regarded as a noble profession to be a merchant in those days. These Muslim merchants visited and settled down in the present Kerala state, Bombay, and northwest coastlines of India. It is not known whether these merchants spread Islam in the Indian society or not, but the light of Islam was shown by these people in India at that time. There is evidence that Muslims from the Northwest came into India and showed them light of Islam. However, it was during the Umayyad Caliphate, Muslim power came to India. Hajjaj made up his mind to appoint Muhammad bin Qasim as the commander of the army to India. Muhammad bin Qasim took 6,000 soldiers on Syrian horses and equally strong camel corps under his command and marched towards India and prayed to Allah for success. He was trained to strictly follow the teachings of Islam in war and peace. He was also very fortunate to have an uncle like Hajjaj who constantly gave him instructions on his way. At last, the teenage commander, Muhammad bin Qasim, entered the land of Sin. The Umayyad Caliph of Damascus, Walid, saw the year 711 A.D. to be a glorious year for the Islamic State. It was in this year that Tariq bin Zayad erected the flag of Islam in Spain, and it was during this year that the flag of Islam was erected on the soil of India. The teenage commander conquered Debel. Muhammad bin Qasim ordered no attack on the Hindu temples. The Hindus were given full freedom of their religion. Very soon, several towns and cities in Sindh fell to Muslims without resistance. The Hindus thought it was a blessing that the Muslims came to rescue them from the torturous rule of King Dahar and his family. The Muslim rule gave Indian people full freedom of religion and worship. No temples were destroyed by the entering Muslim Arabs. Mohammed bin Qasim's rule of justice, kindness, and tolerance brought a greater part of Sindh under the flag of Islam.
a huge part of the population converted to Islam, not by force and not by the sword. Mahmud, a brilliant statesman and fearless brave soldier, very soon he became the king of Afghanistan, Iran, and a major part of Turkey. He hated idol worship. The stories tell that he took an oath before Allah that he would abolish idol worship wherever he could. Then he turned towards India, where the idol worship was part of the Hindu life. In 1000 AD, he took over several forts near the Khyber Pass to secure his kingdom from the enemies. The Raja of Punjab, Jaipal, decided to attack Mahmud and secure the border of India. A huge army of Jaipal crossed the Indus River and stood at the door of the kingdom of Ghazni. Mahmud accumulated his army of 10,000 and advanced from Ghazni. A very fierce battle broke out near Peshawar in Pakistan, and to the great humiliation of Jaipal, Mahmud won a remarkable victory. Jaipal and his 15 sons and grandsons stood before Mahmud as prisoners of war. The sons pleaded for their father's life. Mahmud granted a pardon to Jaipal and his sons. Mahmud swept through the valley of the Ganges, destroyed numerous temples, and acquired enormous wealth and skilled manpower. Mahmud of Ghazni carved an everlasting controversy on the pages of Indian history through his actions of destroying Hindu temples during his attack on India. Did he do it for wealth reasons, or did he do it for religious reasons? Of course, idol worship is strictly forbidden in Islam. However, there is no compulsion in Islam. A Muslim will respect the beliefs of others even though he may not believe in them. In an Islamic state, people from other faiths may live under the protection of the state by paying nominal taxes. They will have the freedom of religion. It is in the history of Islam that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself removed the idols from Kaaba after he entered Mecca in victory. But it was after the people of Mecca had converted to Islam However, in the case of Mahmud of Ghazni, the destruction of idols or temples was carried out by force and compulsion without converting the Hindus to Islam. This fine point has led the Hindu Muslims toward hatred for 1,000 years on the Indian subcontinent, and even today the Muslims in India are paying for it. However, it may be noted that Mahmud did not compel the conquered Hindus to convert. He had a separate Hindu section in his army and allowed full freedom of religion. Mahmud of Ghazni was a scholar and brave soldier. Perhaps he believed that by destroying the temples, he was demonstrating the helplessness of the idol gods to the Hindu communities. In 1151 AD, another family called the Ghulis rose to power in Afghanistan. In 1173 AD, Muhammad Ghuli conquered Punjab and ended the Ghazni Kingdom forever. Pati Raj, a strong king of India, was killed. The Muslim victory now paved the way for the Muslim conquest of entire India. However, Muhammad Ghuli did not want to live in India. He appointed his lieutenant, Qutub Ibek, to be his representative in India. Qutub, in turn, became the first Muslim king of India, his capital being Delhi. Qutub set up the codes of the Islamic State at Delhi and started the construction of a huge mosque. The first structure in this mosque project was the beautiful minaret known as Qutub Minar of Delhi. Qutub did not live to finish the construction of the great mosque as he had dreamed, but the Qutub Minar still stands today as a glorious monument of Islamic art in Old Delhi. The tower is made of sandstone and marble, well carved and polished. It is 250 feet in height and tapers towards the top. The verses of the Holy Quran are carved all along the minaret. Millions and millions of people have seen this great masterpiece of Muslim art for the past 750 years and have admired its beauty and elegance. In the beginning, for centuries, the caller for prayers climbed the tower and called for prayers five times a day. Qutub Minar, as it stands today, is a symbol of the passion that the kings of Afghanistan had in their hearts to assert the teachings of Islam in India. After a few successors, the kingdom was ended by the Kilji group 
in 1290 AD. The first Muslim kingdom in India was established...